All right, guys, we're actually going to be modding this car a little bit backwards today. So this is my new Vert Project car. I showed you guys on uh, the last video, I did the full walk around on it and showed you guys everything, showed you guys the condition, some parts that it came with. And then we actually checked out the engine and we saw that the engine actually had problems. Damn. <laughs> So my initial plan was, I already told you guys the goal for it, this will be a stance car because it's an automatic convertible, puts top down, cruise, and be a nice, perfect stance car. Um, but my initial goals was to get the engine fixed first before I started modding it. But um, sometimes things just fall in your lap. So let me explain. <laughs> While I was on vacation, I kind of already pictured in my head what I wanted the car to look like. So I started looking at wheel options, see what I could find. And I actually ordered wheels while I was on vacation. When I got back, wheels were ready for me. They didn't come the day I got back, but you know, they came, you know, shortly after. And the wheels were actually have been sitting in the garage for a little while. And I didn't plan on showing you guys anytime soon. Not that I want to keep secrets from you, but you know, like I said, I didn't plan on doing anything with this car until then. But Max Speeding Rods actually reached out and they saw that I got a new project car and they wanted to send me some coilovers. So they sent me some coilovers. So now that we have coilovers and I already have wheels, um, let's go ahead and put coilovers and wheels on it. So I actually went to the tire shop already, went to Global Tires, got tires on the new wheels and those are actually still sitting in the car. I'll show you guys later. So we're actually gonna get go ahead and just get started now, put wheels, and coilovers on the car and it's still going to be sitting here as a paperweight but at least it'll look like a nice paperweight and besides if you look at everything else in the driveway everything else in the driveway is modded we don't do stock cars here so let's go ahead and do that so all right front end is up we'll do the fronts first because they're i think they're easier and then uh let's go ahead and look at the coils let's see what we got here there you go, Max Speeding Rods thing. So thank you, Max Speeding Rods, for, uh, I guess, sponsoring this video. Because I wouldn't have did it if they didn't send me coils. So these are my new coilovers. These are beefy. These are super beefy. <laughs> They're actually heavy. Um, so if you're not familiar with Max Speeding Rod coilovers, um, they are a very affordable coilover option for a lot of cars. Um, they don't just sell coilovers. Max Speeding Rods actually makes turbos and uh, engine parts and stuff. And, you know, a lot of people actually turbo their cars with Max Speeding Rods rods, and they actually make a lot of power. So the rods have actually been pretty, pretty good. And a lot of people, you know, they do their Max Speeding Rod coils. If you're not familiar, my drift car actually has Max Speeding Rod coils. Also, they have a very old pair came with the car. Uh, probably could use a refresh probably could use these on there, but um, we're gonna go ahead and slam this thing today So uh, but these are huge. These are actually the t6 version. This is a new version that they have. So this is the top, More top-of-the-line version of their max beating rod coilovers and I think I can actually see these actually have a uniball for the top hat so that you know that way it's not uh, binding as much and it actually has a radial bearing a radial bearing right here and that way when you turn your wheel because this is going to be attached to your strut so every time you turn your wheel the spring typically turns you know it's supposed to turn with it but if this is mounted at the top you know to the car this actually turns with this and not with the whole thing so it doesn't make any like loud squeaking because the, like I said, the old ones, they definitely squeak and crack and stuff. So these should be nice and quiet and pretty smooth. So excited to get these on. These are, I'm serious, these are really beefy. These are way better than the other ones. So here's the front coils out of the box. Um, I, first thing I need to do before I put them in is obviously even these up so they're even on both sides. I think I'll go more for the low side. Since it is a stance car, let's go for the low side. So I will make this even with that. All right, I got my little measuring stick that I like to use. I'm going to measure the distance from the bottom spring. It's upside down right now, but the bottom spring to here. And that is going to be your height adjustment. And we are roughly 18.6 millimeters between these two. So I'm going to make this one the same thing. So we're going to loosen the bottom ring, which I've already loosened. And that way we can twist the coil over. Um, basically use this as a measurement. This this top one right here is going to be for a spring preload don't mess with that just keep it you know keep it tight 
and then this one is going to be kind of like your measurement so you measure that to basically where you want it and then we'll spring the whole loosen this bottom one then spring the whole coil over clockwise to go to raise it or loosen i don't know i honestly get confused every time i do coil overs but one of the ways it's going a certain way so so now you can see height adjustment should be fairly even i'll tighten it when i bolt it all back down but let's go ahead and throw them in the car now the fuck was that all right so here are the stock struts strut is a shock and spring combo when they're together it's called a strut i think i don't know I might be making that up, but I'm pretty sure it's, that's what it's called. I think that's the definition. Anyways, this is why I put both wheels in the air so I can actually turn the wheel and get to every bolt a lot easier. So coilovers for E36, especially in the fronts, are super easy. It's actually six bolts. It's one, two, three, which I think are 13s. And then down here, you got this one in the middle, which I think it's 18s on both sides or 19s. I think and I think that one's 18. So you got these, you need a wrench and maybe a gun. That looks a little rusty, so it's gonna take a little force. So I'm definitely using an impact. I'm using power tools today. And then you got one here and then one on the opposite side of here. So it's actually really easy. So if you look at the stock one and the aftermarket one, you got the one that goes right here and there's a bolt here and a bolt here and there's a pin that just guides that in. It's sitting in the middle, actually against there. You can kind of see it right there. It's a pin that sits in the middle and that's just, you know, keeps it level. And then you got boom, one, two, three on top. So super, super simple. And then all these little gadgets and stuff, the little wires and stuff and the harnesses, they actually stick on here. So, and that is for an M3 sway bar. This is not an M3. So the sway bar is actually attached to the control arm. On the M3s, the sway bars actually attach from here up to here but this is not an m3 so that's why i don't need that so that makes it even easier so i don't have to change the sway bar so uh e36 coilovers typically all have this it's okay if it um has that it doesn't do anything but it's like just in case that makes it super universal so you can use m3 or non m3 coilovers on m3 and non m3 because most companies sell it with that so everything here i just checked are 18 so this is an 18 again opposite side is 18 and this is 18 so you're gonna need a wrench and preferably an impact so we'll go ahead and start off with the top one because it's um super easy i just smacked myself in the face you see that that's why you gotta be careful i should put on safety glasses now because i don't know what i'm capable of all right let's try this again so 18 here. Simple. Damn, they locked tight of the shit out of those. Jesus Christ. For the record, I mean. This does look stock, right? And again, if you guys remember, this is 106,000 miles. These might be stock OEM. I guess OEM, I guess they use Loctite. Personally, this is personally, I've never used Loctite on these bolts. Um, so I, I, just, I just don't. That's done. Now let's drop the top three and then this whole thing will literally just fall out. First, now that I think about it, let's go ahead and pull these all these wires and sensors off the bracket. It's just rubber grommets on there, so it's nothing crazy. And then, uh, as you can see, coilover is pretty much already disconnected. Oh, well, I'm sorry, not coilover. Strut is already disconnected. All right, so again, for the top bolts, these are 13s. So there's one, two, three. When I get to the third one, I'm gonna hold it from the bottom. That way it doesn't just fall. And there you go. And let me try to wiggle that out of there. Problem with 
stock struts are so long that they're actually hard to like move and get out of places. I swear I got it. I swear. This is the hardest part. The bolts weren't hard. This is the hardest part. But two more seconds. 1001, 1002. Bam. There we go. The first stock part is off this car. So let's go ahead and throw the coil over on. They do have sides, so make sure you get the right size. All right. Jesus. All right, now this is the part where you're gonna jack it up into the holes, the top hat twist. So you could twist the top hat to line it up with the holes as best you can. And just hope you get it up there in the fewest amount of tries as possible. And me being a pro, I got that first try. We're gonna go ahead and zip it up with the gun because that's a lot of torque. But tighten it one more time when you actually lower the car on the ground because that's when it's actually gonna have the most force pushing it up. And that way there could be a little millimeter bolt in there that still forces it up and then tighten it again while it's on the ground. So, but let's keep going and get it as high as we can. So it's seated and tighten these down. So there you have it. I got it dusty with my fingers. But this actually has uh, dampening too, so let's go ahead and turn it up to hard because, you know, stance car, right? There, max hard right there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this has uh, camber adjustment. You loosen these and you can push it forward, push it back. Push it back as positive camber, push it forward as negative camber. And we could make those adjustments if necessary. I think typical top hats give you a max of three and a half degrees camber. There are other ways, like I explained earlier, kind of explained. Let me explain again. It's a little easier to explain that than now that it's actually on there. If um, right here, these bolts that go to the knuckle, you can actually get kits. There's, um, I don't know, I haven't done this in so long. I think Turner, Turner Motorsports has a kit, and maybe Beamer World has a kit. Just, just, I mean, you can search camber kits there's they're super cheap but basically it's a plate that goes it's either a plate or you can use washers and you put the washers right in between uh, the 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 coil over and the knuckle and that actually spaces it out and makes it tilt so it actually gives me more camber so you can max out three and a half on the camber arms you can add washers and probably get about seven degrees camber in the front just off the washers so if you do do the washers Make sure you get these bolts longer. These bolts are very short. So if you get the washers that obviously push that that way, you're gonna need longer bolts. And make sure they are like 10.9 grade bolts. They have to be super strong. And um, yeah, make sure the right size and everything. So, but usually when you order the kits, if you order a kit online, they usually come with longer bolts. But if you do it yourself and just wanna go buy some washers and try it, make sure you go buy a longer nut also. All right, and there you have it. Coilovers are now installed on both sides. I did this side way faster because, uh, you know, kind of when you do the same thing over and over again, repetition gets better. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and put the front down so I can do the rears. Um, so should I go ahead and put the wheels on now? Or should I drag you guys along and do a montage of the final product in the last 10 seconds of the video? Now I'm gonna go ahead and put them on now because you guys probably skip ahead anyway. So let's go ahead and put the wheels on now and let me show you what wheels I got. And let me do some explaining because I got to do some a little bit of explaining. So remember I told you what wheels I got for the drift car. They're not on yet because I just haven't put them on yet. I said I'm going to do the whole body kit first and then put the wheels on. But remember I told you I got JDM wheels for it. Here's a flashback. All right. And as we back up, that looks so sick. <laughs> that looks so sick. Now picture it in one color with the actual full body kit. Right now it's just kind of... It's a hot mess right now, but it still looks pretty sick. Like it's gonna, it's gonna be sick. Well, I'm basically gonna do the same exact process for this. So I have wheel adapters. These are actually these wheel adapters. I just have to buy another set, I forgot. But these are actually the wheels. So these are SSR mesh wheels. These are kind of on the rare side. Um, I got them from eBay. I got them from the same seller as I got the other wheels from. So they got here quick, like I explained. 
and um, so that's pretty cool. So these are kind of on the rare side, kind of definitely on the old school side, especially goes with this old school car. And I wanted the classy look for it, but still on the slam side. So the specs right now are actually kind of weak. Let me explain. So first of all, the specs right now are 18. So I am going 18s. I personally like 18s on E36s. I know a lot of people prefer 17s on E36s. Well, I'm not everybody. So I like 18s on E36s. I think on the side profile, they fill up the fenders a lot more and they look really cool. So these are five by 114. So I have to run adapters. They're 18 by eight and a half plus 43. So if I run these same adapters as I'm gonna run in the drift car, which are 25 millimeters, that turns it to an 18 by eight and a half plus 18, which is close to a style five. If you know BMW E36, E39 style fives that everybody runs on the cars, they're 17 by eight plus 20, or they do have an 18 version, which is super rare. And those are the same, same, pretty much same specs, 18 by eight plus 20. So these, as of right now with the adapters will fit like style fives and they'll fit right into the fenders. Might need a fender roll in the rear, but, um, you know that'll work for now so and i mean for now because like i said i always plan for the future since these are three piece wheels i can rebuild them they are five by 114 i don't plan on running adapters forever there is an option to do dual drilled hubs but that option is very expensive and i'm not rich so i can't do that today i can't do that probably not for a while at least i do some stuff on these other cars first so once I do that, then I can actually rebuild the wheels and do like bigger lips and I can turn them from eight and a halfs to like tens with the lower offset. Then they'll just be direct bolt on five by one fourteen, no adapters and the fitment will be even better. The lips will be better. It'd be a wider wheel, look way better. But today these are gonna look pretty good, I think. So I'm excited. Let's get them on the front with the adapters and lower down, see where we're at. And the adapter is really simple. You literally put it on there like a spacer you can use your, since these are 25 millimeters, they are long enough for your stock bolts. There's another company, I don't know the name of them. You have to look it up yourself. There's another company that makes 15 mil adapters, which I could have ran also. And then um, they come with their own studs that are shortened, so. Five by one fourteen. Actually, all right. Actually, after further review, it looks like these are actually a hair, like a couple millimeters too long. Um, I'm just gonna. You could just shave them down just a little bit. It's not gonna like mess up the bolt, but just shave them down just a little bit. Cause when I bolted up the wheel, I can actually see the spacer and then a little bit of a gap before the wheel. So that definitely needs to be adjusted. But I'm actually on a time crunch. I actually have to leave in about an hour and a half. So we're not gonna do that today. Um, the car, again, it's just gonna sit. So it's not going anywhere. I didn't even put the spark plug back in there from testing out. So um, this car is like, again, it's just gonna be a brick. But so I'm gonna make a note, a physical note that I have to do that before I drive anywhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mount them today for the video and then, um, but it'll be pretty close, so. We're gonna go ahead and get these mounted and then um, do, do the back. Bro, look at this fitment, bro. Like I said, it's when I, once I lower it, it should camber in just a little bit. And again, I haven't even adjusted the camber, so I can actually camber it now. I don't, I'm probably not, because should I? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's go ahead and loosen these and just push it as far as I can. Let's go max camera, three and a half. Because again, I don't even know how low it is yet, so. Boom, that's it. Just push it, just push it as hard as you can. And the new fitment, it looks a little bit. Again, it will definitely camber in when I lower it. So right now it's like, in the air, it's like zero degrees. Once it goes three and a half, three and a half is about, about there. It should be good. So let's put the other one on real quick and then lower because I'm so excited to see what this looks like that's gonna oh that's gonna look good especially on this color that's why I wanted to keep this color man this color with silver come on man I do this man all right both sides are on both sides cambered in 
time to put Shotty on the ground, bro. Let's see what we see what we looking like over here. Slow drop. Oh, it can go way lower on these coilovers. Damn, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought it'd be way lower than that. Now we lowering this shit. I ain't gonna have that. Let's go back up. So I think because these are the T6 versions, which are kind of, I guess they're more performance orientated. These will definitely be better on the drift car. I'm definitely gonna put them on here because they're already on here. But I think that's why they're not that low because uh, these can definitely, you know, there's not that much more room to go lower, but I think we'll go ahead and just max them out. I mean, why not at this point? So, because I definitely want this low. All right, bottomed out, full send. So let's see if we made a beautiful mistake. All right, this looks lower in the air already, so this is should definitely make a difference. And I'm about to slam the other side too. That's better. That's a little better. Not still not quite where I want it, but it's a start. Ooh. All right, that that okay. That's what I want right there. Does that side look like that now? Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to show you guys in a second. That looks a whole lot better now that I put both sides down. Now it's actually closer to where I want. Still not as low as I, as I thought it would be, but I guess I'm spoiled because on Ebony, when I was stancing Ebony, um, I was on Broadway Static uh, Suspension. If you know those coils, they go stupid low. But as low as I've ever had my car, my coils still had like four inches to go even lower. So they designed those things a tuck hub if you wanted to. So this is still, this looks really good. This actually looks really good now. Damn, I like that. I can't wait to do the back. Okay, so here it is. That looks dope. That is a perfect fit, man. That is all the way down. We're keeping it right there. We are keeping it right there. I'll roll the front fenders if I have to. Um, this has already been removed, the little fender liner. I knew that wasn't gonna stay in there, so um, it was already off the car, so I was gonna rip it out anyways, but that, oh, that looks, yo, that looks good, dude. Oh, let's do the rear. And if that settles even more. <laughs> oh my God. And like I told you, man, look at the specs. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. I'm telling you, I do this math, bro. I do this math. I do this, bro. Y'all gonna stop playing with me, bro. Y'all gonna stop playing with me. Like I said, man, I did all the math, man. I looked at the specs. I say 18 by eight and a half plus 43. Sounds crazy, but it's a 25 mil offset. Now it's plus 18. Tires are 215, 35, 18. Like I already did all this math, bro. This is the first time ever putting the wheels on the car and it's perfect. I nailed it. I nailed it. So let's do the rears now. <laughs> Damn, that looks good. Oh, almost forgot. Like I told you guys, now that the car's on the ground, go ahead and tighten these now all the way. All right, fronts are done. I still can't believe how perfect that looks. Yes, I can, because my math is perfect. So we have to do the rear. Um, a little confused, because I have not done the rear on a vert. Typically, you pop the trunk. This thing sticks, by the way. There we go. Typically, you pop the trunk, and the rear shock mounts are here. But um, I think, because it's a vert, they are under here. So. Um, I gotta figure out how to make that work because again, this does not work. So uh, I think there's a way to manually take it out. Let me get in here. Jesus, hot in here. Oh, previous owner actually put a thing in here. Look, it is 100 and almost 140 degrees in this car right now. It is hot. So uh, apparently, I have to look at the video. There's something to do with like an allen key and that kind of manually it that's not even an allen key i have to figure out how to manually put this top back all right guys i just glanced at a video um, on my phone and i actually have the top to move a little bit so i guess i'll explain because i'm still learning i haven't fully done it yet so we're kind of learning together but okay so apparently there's three different tops for e36s there's automatic fully automatic semi-automatic and full manual so this is a fully automatic and um 
yeah so i need a tool to twist that so i was right there is a tool that actually goes up there so it is a four allen that you can put in there just kind of squeeze in there and well first before you do that there's a lever we're learning burp stuff together guys there's a lever that you have to pull right here this little red thing and that actually loosens the motors for it so those motors are loose you can actually reattach them in the trunk i'm not doing that because shit don't work anyways and then i just take this thing and spin it clockwise and when i spin it clockwise it starts to go back so i did it enough to make it move and then now we're just going to keep going so clockwise and you can see the top going back And now I think from here, I could actually start to manually push it back. Oh, look at that. We putting the top back. I think I'm putting the top back. I don't know how to get this thing up. Oh, okay. That goes up. Now we can lift this and there we go. There's the shock mounts. Sweet. So wait, hold on. So if I put, okay. I'm trying to figure out how to put the top back now. So can I pull this? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we got a drop top boy oh boy summer boy we coming we coming this summer i know it's july already but we gotta get this going summer boy all right we gotta speed this video up a little bit because i am running late so the car the rear of the car is in the air and i actually found uh some cool things under here so i've actually never seen under this car and there's some bill steens some bill steen Brand new, I don't know about brand new, but some Bilstein shocks down here and they're actually really good condition. So I'm actually gonna save those. So we're still gonna swap them out because um, these are gonna be uh, a little stiffer than these. So, but rears, there are, again, they're, I like doing the fronts. I hate the rears because the rears are scary. You only need one tool under here, which is an 18. And it's this bolt right here. And you have to be very, very careful because it's very very easy to strip and if you strip it you're kind of screwed so don't strip it all right first thing you're going to do is jack this thing up and only get it on the shock we need to have this shock sitting off pressure so this thing will come straight out and not sideways because it is very easy to strip and it is very highly recommended to use a manual tool but not power tools because you can strip that very easy with power tools and this is okay we're loose and we're just got to do this manually the whole way and we're free Woo. Get the factory spring, just put your foot here, push, and it just falls out. Now here's the new springs. This goes on the very top. It just sits there and makes it flush with uh, this little nipple up here. You can see that. And this will go in the bottom and will kind of sit kind of flush like that too. I mean, it'll flush out when it's actually compressed but you get it. So this is the actual adjustment on the rear. This is the height adjustment right here. Over here, this is the preload. Um, this is how stiff and bouncy it can be. If you want it less stiff, screw it all the way down. I'm gonna leave it where it is because I don't know how stiff it is. And if the fitment's really, really tight, I'm gonna need it to be kind of stiff. Again, stance car. So I can make adjustments later. I can't drive it right now, so we won't know till then. But as far as height i'm full sending it so i'm actually going to take the spring adjuster all the way the fuck out actually i did put the bottom one uh the bottom ring back on because it is wider so to give me a little bit of extra insurance to make sure it sits flush on there so i'm going to keep the bottom one on there still all the way maxed out and then we'll put the top one in there these are staying home slides in there like front like rear springs are like so sketchy 
but that is how they are designed like it really is how they are designed and then that goes in there and that will go just like that now it's kind of floppy right now because the shock is not on it but once the shock is actually pushed up and this is up then we'll it will actually sit flush so that's just it's just how rear e36 suspension is now to put this in we're basically going to go under here and you can i mean you can see the top right there and we're basically just going to line it up you're going to hold it with one hand and then tighten the bolts with the other hand I just put the cover back on so this side is done i just have to push the shock up to meet uh the hole and put it back together there's a lot of water in here you guys told me on the last video that there's some drainage things that are probably clogged that i need to get rid of but i haven't looked it up i don't have time to do it today but that is definitely noted i would definitely try to get the water out of my car <laughs> so um that's definitely another project another day but for today, we're slamming this thing on its nuts. Videographers, don't you hate when like you press record on a camera and you talk to the camera and then you press record to stop the camera and then you realize that's actually the first time you press record. So everything you just said is not recorded. <laughs> um, basically, I just put the, uh, the rear shock in Basically, it's um, do the exact opposite of what I just did, and the rear shock is now installed, and you see the spring is actually compressed now. So, um, yeah, so this side is done. Let me go ahead and knock out the other side real quick. And actually, when I got up, not only did it have Bilstein's on the rear, it actually has eyeback springs. So these are actually, looks like they're actually lowering springs. So fronts were definitely stocked, but it looks like the rear was lowered. So um, anyways, let me do the other side real quick. Speed this video up, put the wheels on, and we'll see what the final product is. Oh, damn. <laughs> this might be too low. Or the rear might be too low. We're going to leave it because, again, the car ain't going nowhere. But and I got to end this video so I can leave. But, Jesus, that thing already tucking. That's, oh. That's the camber I need right there. All right, bro, about that time. Again, I'm not driving it today, so if it's too low, it's too low. If it sits on tire, it doesn't matter. I just want to put the coilovers on there and the wheels. And I want to see what this thing looks like. That fitment is crazy. But I told you I nailed this shit. So let's see. Let's drop it. Let's drop it. Oh, I need two hands. Slowly, slowly. Ooh. Oh, it's definitely sitting on tires. Barely moved. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's sitting on the fender. It is literally sitting on the fender. Oh, my God. That look. Okay, let me put the top back. Let me go stand back. Let me put the top back real quick. Hold on. Put this, I'm going to put this all the way back. We don't need this. We don't need it. We're going to get the roof up out of here, bro. We're going to get the roof up out of here, bro. <laughs> roof dismissed. Ooh. <laughs> that looks so damn good. Told you I like 18s because they feel the fenders, man. That... Y'all gonna stop sleeping on 18s. Y'all can like 17s if you want. Y'all gonna stop sleeping on 18s, bro. That looks that looks dope. That looks so clean. Now I know this car don't run. It ain't gonna do nothing but sit here. But if it ain't gonna look nice sitting there. <laughs> look at the Fitbit. Fitbit A1. Look at my ET. Told you, ET perfect. I can roll the fenders a little bit. And then the tuck all the way down. Front fenders. But well, I'm telling you, bro. I do this, bro. I do stance, bro. I'm a mathematician, bro. Come on, man. Y'all don't think 19 by 10s will fit on this car. They do. Come on, man. I do this. Come on, man. 
Wait, man. hold on. Finishing touch. Remember I told you it only looks clapped because it didn't have corner lights. I got corner lights. I got corner lights. Brand new corner lights. And clears too. Oh, oh, I scratched them. I got brand new clear corner lights. I think clear gonna really look good with the silver. That's that's why I wanted the clear. Let's throw this on here. Just slide it in place. It ain't gonna be mounted. We ain't going nowhere. It will fall off unless I zip tie it somewhere. But there we go. Now it ain't clap no more. Now it ain't clap no more. Now it ain't clap. That shit is hard, bro. Damn. Whew. I did that shit, bro. I did that shit, bro. I'm gonna take some pictures on my phone, bro. I might post some on Instagram. Y'all gonna see it first, though, because I'll, you know, Instagram, you know what I'm saying? I don't care that much about Instagram. I care more about YouTube. So, YouTube and my YouTube following, y'all, y'all see everything first, man. This thing is. I did that shit. <laughs> that's perfect bro that's perfect that looks perfect so anyways that's gonna do it for this video i gotta put everything up and we gotta leave but that and the gray seats yeah i'm gonna keep gray interior so i gotta find gray seats i gotta find some good gray seats because the gray and the gray and the and the finish i might maybe when i rebuild them and do bigger lips i might do white faces i don't know the silver faces really especially right now with the sun because every time i've seen it you know i saw the wheels in the garage you know they wasn't that bright but i'm looking at them now in the sun they look crazy so i think i i don't know i don't know we're not there yet but i think the silver with gray interior with the top down looks dope so that is a really dope video so that is going to be a that's gonna be a wrap i'm done i gotta put this stuff up like i said i gotta be somewhere and um, I'm, I'm really happy about this. I am really, really happy about this. That looks sick. This summer's gonna be sick. I gotta get this car running, bro. How long can you drive it on five cylinders? I'm just, I'm just curious. Cause if I can, you know what I'm saying? If I can just pull this thing up to a local meet or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Five, eight, don't listen to it. You know, just park it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. Deuces guys. I will see you in the next one. <laughs>